Hey, what's happening guys? Got something interesting for you. Today we're going to talk about measuring the value of a capacitor. Now the easiest way to do it is to have one of these little guys here or an LCR meter. But sometimes you don't have those things. But if you have a function generator and you have an oscilloscope, you can do it. Um, Mike Lorton had an excellent video on this and uh, we're gonna do it here today what we have here is a capacitor of an unknown value now I know what the value is but you don't and we're going to measure it using the time it takes to charge to 63.2 percent which is a value of Euler's number if you're not uh, really up into the whole mathematic things, Euler's number is a mathematical constant. It is a real and a rational number, and it's basically 2.718281828459, yada, 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 yada. It's a natural logarithm, okay? And that's the point that we need to know. So just a little under two-thirds charge is going to give us the value of our capacitor. So to set up the experiment, the first thing we need to do is set up our function generator. Okay, now holding down duties today as function generator is the Siglent SDG1032X. Very nice function generator. Did a review on it a little while back. I will link to it below. And it is set up to provide a square wave pulse at one kilohertz, one volt peak to peak, and I'm offsetting it by one volt, so we're always at a positive charge. That's it. That's all we need to know about the function generator. All right, second is our setup for the capacitor. Now here is the output from the function generator positive and ground and we need to charge our capacitor now we need something to slow down the charge and in this case we are using a 1k resistor all right we have our resistor coming from the positive rail charging the capacitor going to the ground so, when there is a positive pulse, the capacitor will charge, and when the pulse is in the trough, or basically no, no voltage, the capacitor will discharge. And then I have my probe leads hooked up basically across the capacitor. I have it plugged, my ground plugged into the ground here, but you could just as easily plug it in right here, and it will work out the same. Okay, now working today in the role of the oscilloscope is the Siglent SDS1202X-E, 200 megahertz, one gigasample per second scope. This is the latest and greatest scope from Siglent. Just out, fresh off the market, doesn't even have hair in its armpits yet. This is a nice scope. So, what you see here is the charge and discharge cycle of the capacitor. Here we are at the zero point and it charges up, it saturates right there, then the pulse goes low and it discharges. So the first thing we need to do is get our cursor menu on and we're going to measure Y. So, we will put this cursor right there, and this cursor will go right here at the bottom. And our delta, which is right here, is one volt. So what we need is 63.2, so let's tear it down to 632 millivolts. It's 
switching to that top cursor again. Now we're not going to be able to get right on to 632 here. So we're going to get as close as we possibly can. Okay, so we have made it to 630, as you can see right there. Maybe if I turn the light back on, this will be a little bit more clear. Yeah, there we go. How about that? So, 630. Now we need our X value, our time value. So we'll press the X cursor button. And we will set the first cursor right where it begins to charge, right at that point right there. Oopsies, we need to see them both here. And then we're going to set our second cursor, our second X cursor, right to the point where that 63.2 line crosses our charge line. There we go. Right like that. And where our X delta reads, 68 microseconds. That's going to give us the value of our capacitor, which it is telling us in this case is 68 microseconds. Let's check it and find out. All right, we've got the uh, multi component tester there. We have our capacitor here. Put it in. Hit the button. 67.48, and a half nanofarad. And what did the scope read? 68 nanofarad. And remember, that was only getting us a delta Y of 63.0 couldn't get those other two hundredths in there perhaps that would have made the difference but 67.48 is close enough to 68 for the work I do and probably for the work you do too unless you're working with you know extremely critical things that's close enough so with all that being said I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment and share. Try these experiments. Let me know how they worked out for you. I'll see you next time.